close your eyes. Think about what it's like to live in Anchorage. Anchorage sits by the edge of the sea With mountains and valleys and eagles in trees Moose wander downtown as free as can be And nobody knows why the shipping's not free I was so excited when we bought this building. It seemed perfect. Close to hotels downtown, it was close to the convention center, and even the park strip. I bought this building in 1998. The owners at the time were retiring and they made me an amazing offer. They told me that I reminded them of when they first started because I was full of hope and vision. We made a deal and I moved my operation into this neighborhood and I was pretty darn excited about the future. At the time, there was a building across the street called Beans Cafe. It had been built in 1985. I didn't really know much about it, but in those days, I thought everything was an adventure. In 2005, the Brother Francis shelter was built next to Beans. I never thought our properties would become entwined in a way that would define each of us. Our company was already working with Catholic Social Services, helping to plan and organize a large annual charity event. Over the past 30 years, we had helped raise literally millions of dollars to support their important programs. We volunteered with Beans, we helped organize fundraisers, and basically, we were pretty good neighbors to each other. But this is a tough neighborhood with a long and colorful history. So much of what happens here today is a result of that dark history. My name is Christopher Constant and I am the assembly member for this district. And before that, I was the president of the Fairview Community Council. And before that, just a concerned neighbor who has watched the slow and steady deterioration of our downtown. The history of this neighborhood is quite uh, colorful and vibrant and also filled with challenges. You know, Fairview for a long time was a separate community and it was forced into Anchorage by annexation, a fight that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Long, long before Fairview even was a neighborhood of the municipality, we had as a city set up strict policies that made it so African-American and Alaska Native people and people that we didn't want in our neighborhoods couldn't buy property, couldn't rent property, couldn't effectively be in the downtown. And the areas that were set up for people to live on the outskirts were the Chester Creek around the East Chester Flats and right here in Ship Creek. The efforts to deal with this have been going on for a long time. I came across a speech given by a former Anchorage mayor, and these are just some of the excerpts. This small group over the years has created more visible social and economic problems than any group of its size in our community. The 90 to 100 hardcore public inebriates have cost the city millions and millions of dollars. The municipality has been trying to do something about this problem for years. Some significant inroads have been made. For example, the Community Service Patrol has freed up foot patrolmen to perform other public protection services. We funded a center called Beans Cafe, where the Skid Row population can come into a warm, healthy environment for a nutritious meal. We have provided sleep-off beds aimed at meeting the needs. But we have found these efforts are not enough. They appear to be piecemeal and, oftentimes, not as effective as they should be. This was from a speech given at a citywide conference by former Mayor George Sullivan. The year was 1981. That was nearly 40 years ago. I, I could show you a stack of studies that have been done since the George Sullivan administration asking what's to be done about this population and this challenge. 
and those studies get re redrafted every three to five years and they look s substantively the same every time they come out. The question is how concentrated and how much trouble are we willing to accept? How few interventions are we going to provide and what level of despair are we willing to tolerate openly on the streets of our city? And that really has been going on for decades. Today I started to clean my property for the third time in a year. My fence along Carlock has become the last stop, where people wait for the shelters to open, they wait for a meal, and in many cases they just wait. The corner is the last stop where you can still have alcohol, do drugs, and just indulge one last time before crossing 3rd Avenue into a completely different set of rules. It is a place where the misfortunate fall victim and the criminal element that preys on them hunts. This is a story about the systematic failure of government and social service agencies to protect and defend their neighbors. Um, historically, what we have seen around here has been that the Operators of the social services are in many ways indemnified from the responsibilities that any responsible business owner might have in the community. That the operators have, whether they um, are in goodwill or not, or in good faith or not, have made the determination that their responsibility for the people that they serve ends at their property line. So it has been long perceived by residents who live nearby that the offsite impacts of these operations to the people who live nearby greatly outweigh the benefit of those services. You have, in fact, an area that's a DMZ, a no man's land, between the boundaries of these properties where these concentrated services are being provided and then where the people shop and where people reside within that kind of vortex, if you will. This battle continues every day. The crowd on Carlick is gone right now. The COVID-19 pandemic has moved most into a new temporary shelter situation. And now they wait there. I hear the term compassion fatigue. And those of us who live or work near this area experience the fatigue side of compassion where we are forced to pay a special tax for the rest of this community when they drive all of these problems here and then those problems spill out of the areas in which the services are supposed to be provided into our yards, into our business properties, into the streets we're trying to go through. We're paying a heavy burden that no one else has to pay. In fact, there is no dignity for the individuals who are out on the streets, there is no dignity for the providers of social services, and there's no dignity for the city government in the way we're doing business here today. But this is the story of only one business. There are many along 3rd Avenue, including long-term residents, owners, renters, and good people who just want a break from this cycle of anti-development, crime, and a lack of support from the municipality. It started probably peaking in, I think around 2003. I have this really great graphic that I have uh, used to demonstrate to people, I use Legos. Um, Anchorage is divided, Anchorage proper, not the bowl, the bowl, not Eagle River, Chugiak, Girdwood, but Anchorage in the bowl, is divided into 850 grids for emergency services. And so the average calls for service to each of those grids across the municipality is about 50. The calls for service to this grid in 2003 were about 500. Fast forward to 2018 and they were closer to 10,000. Think about that. The conditions in our community deteriorated so significantly that we were not able to find uh, reasonable tenants and we were forced to board up our property and walk away for over a decade. We've only recently returned to the community to take back what is rightfully ours. And the, 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 the crime that comes with these open air markets happening 
it's it's such a, an overwhelming burden on the people who live near or work nearby you know because you become the shopping ground for restocking that camp the day after it's abated they're coming here next because why because they want what you have if it was just some trash over the fence i could live with that the truth is this area has become unsafe my fence is cut regularly We've had several things stolen, and now we have to lock everything. Just to discover in the morning, attempts were made to break into my building. My neighbor took a more drastic approach to keeping criminals out. The truth is that nobody should be afraid to go to work in Anchorage. My staff have voiced their concern about being on the property after dark. We have a six-foot fence topped with barbed wire, and we're still not safe. We feel like we're working at a prison, and we are the prisoners. But I'm encouraged. This week, I asked my friends and neighbors along 3rd Avenue to lend me a hand. We call ourselves the 3rd Avenue Radicals, not because our ideals or methods are radical, but because we share the radical idea that this area can be a beautiful and contributing neighborhood. We filled most of a 15 cubic yard dumpster with the trash from just along my fence on Carlick. We are cleaning up the area, wanting to make our neighborhood safe, clean. There's a lot of trash, a lot to clean up on a regular basis. And our tourists to Anchorage love this city, but they love a clean city, they love a safe city. I was shocked today when we came down how many vodka bottles there were. The great big Kirkland vodka bottles, this whole hillside was loaded with them. This is not just a problem here, this is a problem throughout Anchorage, and for years we've been talking about these problems. In November, I filled my regular dumpster with plastic food containers and many pairs of socks. Brand new, still had the tags. Much of this was the result of misguided contributions by people who wanted to help. Those same donations given directly to Beans or Brother Francis would have actually made a difference. we found one more indication that life on the streets had taken a terrible turn. Needles. Close your eyes and imagine Anchorage without trees. Who would ever think that trees could be a weapon in this crazy battle? But let me show you some things around my property. The trees along 4th Avenue have been removed. The trees in front of my place on 3rd Avenue have all been removed. The entire two blocks in front of Beans Cafe and the Brother Francis Shelter has no trees. The block next to my property, now owned by MLP as storage, has removed all the trees. And along third by the old Native Hospital property, there are no trees. This ever-expanding cement and barbed wire fence has begun to swallow this part of the neighborhood. I've been encouraged by both police and social service agencies to remove the last trees on Carlick, and I refuse to do it. I've cut the limbs up to eight feet, but I refuse to kill that tiny patch of humanity that makes this neighborhood more than a war zone. When you close your eyes and think about Anchorage, is this the image you see? 
when systems break down and you reboot a system, you start over, you have great opportunity to do things differently. And so we may be at a point right now where we never have been before because all of the systems of the last 40 years are broken. Everything is shut and we're going to reboot and reopen and restart everything. And with that, we have the opportunity to do things smarter, better, safer. And so I have some hope that we are going to go down that road. And that is um, dependent on the people here in this conversation, keeping the pressure up in a civil and positive way. Today, we won the battle. The street is quiet and clean. But what about tomorrow? My favorite place to 